Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Rob Votive. Just got done with a couple of under-the-hood mods for the Toyota Tacoma. Of course, the cold air intake, which, by the way, I really do like. I'm not quite sure why I was against it to begin with, and I was. It's, it's one that I really didn't like too much when I started looking way back when I got into cold air intakes. Of course, I'm talking about the K&N. It's the opened... Uh, open cover intake and I wasn't really a big fan of it and I don't know why after getting one and having it installed myself I kind of dig it I like the look under the hood and it's amazing how much more room there is under the hood with that thing in there you know I could never understand before how people put air compressors and things underneath the hood of the Tacoma because frankly there was no room with the uh, S&B cold air intake. I mean, the thing is huge. Don't get me wrong, I like the S&B cold air intake, but eh, I think I like the K&N better. Uh, as far as how's it doing, it's been a couple of days, I've been driving the truck around, and the one big thing that you always worry about when you do anything like this is that you're gonna create problems in the form of a check engine light. I've heard a lot of people talk about it. I'm happy to say I've never had it happen one time and I've done this a lot of times so I think it's more due to the installation you have to be careful you have to pay attention to what you're doing you have to get the mass airflow sensor in correctly you got to plug it back in um, and I think it's important to disconnect the battery you know I don't know why you're not really doing anything other than disconnecting the sensor but it does take the truck a little while to go to sleep so even though you've turned it off, the systems are still functioning for a little while and it can be up to an hour. You know, when I did the pedal commander, I had to wait, I think it was 40 or 50 minutes before the truck completely shut down. So maybe it's just the fact that you unplug the MAF sensor, the system knows that and starts yelling at you. I don't know. But here's a quick picture just as proof, no problems in my truck. Now, how is the cold air intake doing otherwise? Uh, gotta say, after driving it around for a couple days, I do think I'm getting more sound out of the truck. Now, I don't know if that's something to do with the exhaust. I do have an aftermarket exhaust on the truck, so maybe the K&N you know, air filter or cold air intake in conjunction with the dual aftermarket exhaust is giving me some more sound. I don't know. I kind of think it's more coming from under the hood. The exhaust note just seems to have changed a little bit. It seems to be more bass, more guttural, if you will. Not talking Mustang GT guttural, but still a little bit more guttural bass sound, which I like. It's pretty cool. Now, it's not for the faint of eared, because frankly, it is kind of loud. I mean, if you don't want to hear the exhaust, you definitely don't want to go with an aftermarket louder exhaust. That wouldn't make a lot of a lot of sense, really, but I like it. As far as power goes, you know, it's amazing to me. Each one of these mods, the cold air intake, the exhaust, they've stated that you're gonna gain horsepower. Uh, I never believe it too much because it's so faint. You know, 7 to 10, 15 horsepower, if you're lucky, something like that. And they always include their little sheet, you know, with the, the dyno on it that they've done. Of course, they're professionals. They're doing it under perfect conditions. Anything they can to eke out a couple of more horses so they can report it honestly to us. I never really noticed it before when I just did one single thing. Because frankly, you know, let's use 10 horsepower as a gain is really not enough that you're gonna feel it in the seat. You know, it's like taking 10 pounds off of the car, you know, or the truck. It's gonna make it a little bit lighter, but you're not gonna feel that. But I have to say, putting all these things together and adding them up does seem to have make, made a difference, but especially after this last install. Now, I'm not gonna say that it isn't all in my head, because you know, who knows what's rattling around up there, but, the truck feels even quicker to me now than it did before I put the K&N cold air intake in. Now, in all honesty, full disclosure, 
I do have the pedal commander installed in the truck, so I've eliminated throttle lag, and that alone, which by the way is the single most uh, vehicle truck changing from an acceleration and lag elimination standpoint, mod that you can do in my opinion. There shouldn't be any third generation Tacoma on the road without it. The exhaust, the cold air intake, uh, a wash job to get all the dirt off of the truck, you know, that reduces weight too, to some nth degree. It definitely feels quicker to me. I'm very happy with it, but it creates a problem for me. You know, as we're getting closer to the release of the redesigned Tacoma, the brand new redesigned Tacoma for 2024, I'm not sure I want to get rid of this truck. I mean, I really like it. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not going to get the redesigned Tacoma. For sure, I'm going to be getting that. I might have to just bite the bullet and add another vehicle to the fleet. You know, I have the Jeep Gladiator. I have the Honda Civic. Of course, I have this truck, the, T the Tacoma 3rd Gen, and uh, also the wife's Jeep Wrangler. You know, I'm not trying to run a parking lot. I really am not, but... It's going to be, it would be hard to get rid of this truck right now. Now, maybe by the time the, the redesign comes out, I'll be used to it. You know, it'll be feeling slow to me or something. It, it's never going to feel slow. But I'll be used to the power gains that I've had. And then maybe it'll be a little easier. I'm still planning on probably keeping this truck for a little while. Just to kind of do some side-by-sides with the next gen Tacoma. I mean, it's not often that Toyota puts out a brand new truck, right? Particularly the Tacoma. This truck's been around since, I don't know, 1830 or something like that. Well, not that long, but it's been around for a long time. So it'd be nice to have the opportunity to kind of put them together and compare them side by side just to see what Toyota really did change. And one big thing I'm curious about, other than the obvious, you know, the engine and the looks and all that, is how the mods that exist out there will transfer or translate over to the new Tacoma. Will they at all? Or are the aftermarketers going to have to go back to the drawing board and create all new mods? That's something I'm going to be really curious to see. Anyway, I just wanted to get on, give you my thoughts. I love the new cold air intake. Also put some struts on, which was part of my goal in putting that new intake in. They're working perfectly. Of course, as usual, there's videos of all of this on the channel. All you have to do to find one of my videos is just go to YouTube and search Rob Motive and whatever it is you're looking for. You'll probably get multiple videos about it, different perspectives and things like that. Anyway, leave a comment. If you put a new cold air intake on your Toyota Tacoma, did you notice a difference? And do you think it's really just in your head? I'd be curious to know. Also, real quick, I do have two additional channels. Mod Driven, all about that Honda Civic. Lots of mods and things over there. And Rob Motive JT, all about the Jeep Gladiator. Check them out, and if you're interested, why not subscribe? And while you're at it, smash the subscribe button here too. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.